This data is to record the effects and stages of CNI. I will try to describe as vividly and descriptively as possible, as requested by my superiors. This document is to depict and describe the effects of CNI on human patients at our research hospital. The virus causes cell damage at an advanced rate, but allows for brain operation without any other functioning organs. Although it does not stop infection of other diseases, it allows for brain immortality. The brain will function independently and operate the body, even in the case of heart shutdown. Unlike previous research attempts, this allows for complete retained consciousness of the subject in question. With this, we could immortalize the greatest minds of the earth, preserving them throughout history. Sacrifices had to be made, of course. Without further ado, I will document the effects and stages as follows. Stage one, the agent, or serum, rather, was designed to infect via the bloodstream. These cells would infect the system and spread, eventually reaching the brain. As depicted by figure 1A, the infectious agent travels very quickly through the blood and fluid of the body. In stage one, the nerve agent enters the body through a needle. The patient would be restrained during this, as the initial process can be extremely painful. The infection spreads rapidly, but does not begin to decay until stage two, when the brain is reached and infected. As the injection occurs, the patient tested experienced trauma and convulsions, screaming. Sedation cannot be administered, as it has had negative effects on the spread of the infection. The patient was simply admitted to react in the manner he did, which is completely natural. It was discovered only later, however, that the patient must be kept conscious during this process, and the heart rate must be increased so to pump the infection quickly. The patient was administered adrenaline before nearly entering unconsciousness. The subject's heart rate increases gradually to near lethal levels. This again is completely natural, as the heart will not even be required to function, so long as the brain is infected. As the heart pumps the serum rapidly throughout the body, it enters the cranium and affixes itself via barbs and probes. At this point, the patient may be allowed to slip out of consciousness, which is usually recommended. Stage two. On day two, the infection has spread completely throughout the body. It spreads like a fungus and attaches itself to muscles and flesh inside. It spreads itself onto organs and affixes itself everywhere in the same manner it would the brain, as depicted by figure 2a. Patient may experience nausea or fatigue. He or she may complain about stomach cramps or pains. As tested, if the patient does vomit, the vomit must be swallowed or administered back into their system so that full infection will occur. The subject in question was restrained and administered his own vomit through a funnel. This fatigue will eventually end by day four. On day four, Decomposition occurs internally as the fungus eats away at the insides of the patient. It is recommended the patient be kept heavily sedated during this particular process, as the pain can be excruciating until the nerves are eaten away. The process lasts five to seven days. By day six, the muscles have entered a state of decomposition, as depicted by figure 2b. Once the muscles are infected and necrotized, the nerves are eaten away rather quickly long before the muscles and flesh are. The fungus eats away cells at an advanced rate, where it only consumes necessary and essential to function areas very slowly. It is possible the fungus may even be self-aware and able to act consciously. By day nine, the entire body has entered a very slow state of decomposition, five nanometers per each 24 hour period, completely eaten away on average, and the flesh and muscle have been penetrated to spread and rapidly eat away all nerves. By day 11, all nerves are eaten away, and the muscles and cells are surrounded by infection, slowly spreading with no chance to fight it off. The infection will begin to spread towards the skin, 
eating away skin and tissue on the outside of the body. It is at this point the subject awakens, if sedated, and enters stage three. Stage three. Upon awakening, the subject grows increasingly hostile as a result of the sentient virus. It was it is recommended to, at stage three, remove the immortalized brain for transfer to a suitable subject. If the test proceeds, the subject develops internal boils inside and out its body, which, upon study, contain the serum, as depicted by figure 3A. The subject, although retaining its conscious mind and personality, begins to lose any sense of empathy. It becomes extremely hostile and animalistic, but is able to act collectively with other infected, as if they are capable of telepathy and able to move tactically as a group, cooperating. Although hostile and harmful, the subject is able to reason and be reasoned with, allowing for a relative calmness. The subject can feel no pain or reaction, as all nerves have been eaten away. By day 23, the subject's necrosis increases the speed at which it eats away cells, at 10 micrometers per 6 hour period. The muscles are surrounded and infected as depicted by figure 3b, and the subject becomes generally slower and weaker. The subject becomes increasingly unreasonable and acquires a hunger for human meat. The subject may engage in self-mutilation to appease this hunger, or to dismember face for no purpose other than sheer dementia and insanity. One subject in particular gouged his own eyes out and ate them. At this point, the skin develops gangrene and tears, being eaten from the inside. By day 34, the subject refuses to eat anything but human meat, growing thin and weak, but still able to function with the CNI serum as depicted by figure 3C. The subject grows weak and feeble, only able to walk. It becomes increasingly violent and insatiable due to hunger, weakness, and influence of the sentient fungal parasite. It is able to cooperate with other subjects in a way that mimics ants, as if they all know what they desire to do and work together to achieve it. By day 40, the subject's muscles are half eaten away, and the subject is able to stumble and crawl to move. The bone marrow is weakened and muscle destroyed to an extent where a simplest trip of the feet can cause fractures. The boils eventually pop and strands of the serum bleed out. The subject's body is exposed through ulcers in the skin, hollowed from the eaten muscles. As organs, fat, muscle, and skin are consumed, the subject enters stage four. Stage four. The subject's body is consumed by the virus by day 70. The brain still functions, but the body is unable to operate due to feeble weakness. At this point, the brains may have begun decomposition as well, which is why it is always suggested to remove the brains before complete necrosis occurs. The bone marrow around the skull is eaten, and the skeletal frame of the body is compromised, breaking apart. The body ceases to function. The brains are removed and stored, and the body's cremated. It is absolutely vital to destroy all remnants of the bodies to prevent an infectious breakout. In reality, it is only necessary to allow complete infection so the brain may be reached. The body is relatively useless afterwards, but provided a research subject. As the project wraps up, it is required that all subjects be terminated. The serum will be collected and sold. This entire building must be destroyed and no traces be left. In the event of an infection breakout, the entire building will lock down. I will hold a device that will detonate the entire complex if the infection breaks out and is not contained. It is vital that the infection not break out until deemed necessary. This concludes my report.